Hi, welcome to Virtual Farm Science Review. We're out here doing hay demos today. My name is Christine Gelly from OSU Extension. And I'm Brent Rains from the Crone Company from Olive Branch, Mississippi. Together, Brent and I are going to talk about some educational components of making hay. And first things first, we're going to talk about cutting height. Cutting height is very important both for good quality forage and maintaining your equipment. Brett, you've brought along a few different knives as well as an example to show us how to angle the cutter bar for best results. I have, Christine. This is a profile of our of a cutter bar, uh, a typical design of a, of a cutter bar that's used in the industry today. And you'll notice it's kind of a wedge type profile. Ideally, you want to run that cutter bar through the field as level as possible. You don't want to run it down on the nose. You don't want to run it back on the heel because what that's going to do is it's going to increase your horsepower requirement. You want to move that crop across the, the cutting disc and, the, and out the back of the machine or into the conditioning medium as smoothly as possible. If we're talking about stubble height, uh, you know, most universities in, including The Ohio State University, recommend a stubble height of approximately three inches. Uh, and that's a really good place to start. The way that we do that is you can do a little bit of adjustment with your, with your cutter bar adjustment on your machine, but you want to use what's called a high cut skid. And what that skid does is it clips on the front of your, of your mower conditioner and it bolts through the back. And that will raise your cutter bar up approximately one to three inches to give you that three to five cutting height that you want to do. One thing that's you may have to go with a, with a higher cut skid shoe if you're doing a sorghum sudan or a sorghum type crop, especially where nitrate is going to be a concern that's migrating up into the stalk due to the weather conditions. So the, cut, the cutting skid and the skid shoe will allow you to still run your cutter bar at a smooth level profile through the field. Indeed it will, and that's going to benefit plant health overall. You'll have better stand regrowth if your cutting height is appropriate, a denser stand, and less weed competition as well. Now another important thing is having good, sharp knives on your cutter bar. Right? We, you brought up a different kind of I ball. did. I did. I brought a cutting knife off of a machine that was actually running. And you can see the guy had some issues with streaking and he was complaining about the quality of the cut. And you can see right here, Christine, by just comparing these two, what the, what the difference was. And yeah, I wonder. I wonder why it wouldn't cut, huh? So one thing that we have uh, here in the Great Lakes states, uh, especially uh, uh, here in Ohio, is we have a very diverse mix of geography. And like where we're mowing here near London, Ohio today, it's flat as can be. We go about 60 miles east of here and we start getting into the hill country and uh, things are a little bit serious. Some, uh, a lot of reclaimed coal mine ground over in, in eastern Ohio down along the, uh, along the river. And we have customers that have more challenging uh, conditions. So they're concerned they have a lot of stones. Or maybe you mentioned some uh, some ground uh, where the creek came up, and there may be some debris that came up, and the creek went back down. We have two blade options that are available. We have a regular updraft blade, which has a, a tapered angle to it that is reversible, and that will allow you, that gives you some lift. That gives you almost like a, a big vacuum going through your feet. The thing that that may do, depending on your crop, is um, ash content is going to be a big thing that Christine and I are going to talk about here in just a minute. But, you know, maybe if you're worried about ash content and or stones, you have more, con uh, more challenging conditioning, you may want to go with what we call a roof-shaped blade. This blade is inherently stronger. You'll notice the top of the blade is flat, and then the edges come down. So we don't get as much lift with that. We won't get as pretty a cut with this as we will with the updrafts lawnmower style blade, as you will. But uh, it, it will take some of the, uh, the banging and, and bruising that sometimes the stones and, and the rougher conditions bring up. So, 
certainly make uh, you change knives less frequently. You change knives less, less frequently, that's right. And I've been watching you guys do hay demos all morning. You do have a quick change knife system, which yep. is convenient. That's right, and that will allow you to change the blade when you should, not when you have to. Uh, when we just stri strictly stick in a tool that kind of looks like a golf club, and we stick it in underneath the cutting turtle, pry down, slip the new knife in, and you're back in business. So it, it's done when it should be done, instead of when I absolutely positively have to do it. So it makes for a much better quality cut. That's and better regrowth. Better yeah, regrowth. definitely better regrowth, healthier stand. The cleaner your cut is, the easier it's going to be for your plant to grow back. And the cleaner the cut is, the less likely you'll have entry of pathogens. We're near Columbus, Ohio right now. The farther east you get, the narrower the roads get. And the more challenges that we face with our fellow uh, uh, road users that we have to share the highway with. We're going to show you how simple it is to go from mowing to transport on a side pole crone mower conditioner. So Aiden, let's just pull it in. He doesn't have to get in, he doesn't have to get out of the cab. Just that easy. So we move it that way. And then on the ends, we have the ability to fold that up to make it even narrower. So share the road, use your part of it, but uh, be safe and be smart. Let's talk about conditioning options. We have, it depends on your crop. It depends on your, um, your environment. What kind, of, uh, what kind of weather challenges that you have. Maybe the farther north you live, you may have shorter days, higher humidities. All kinds of variables will, will be involved with determining what kind of conditioning. The first option you have, of course, is no conditioning whatsoever. Just lay it down, let Mother Nature do, uh, you know, let the sun, let it do its thing. The crop will respirate down into the 40s, you know, before it starts to, uh, uh, to, to protect itself and, and, and slow down and stop. So um, the other option we have is the V-tine. Uh, a lot of customers uh, have grass-based crops. And, uh, you know, there's more and more genetic research being done with uh, grass forages uh, than there are with cereals. And uh, so there's more and more interest in grass. So we have the V-tine conditioner, which is a, a metal V that picks the crop up off the cutter bar. It's not a flail, because if it was a flail conditioner, you would not need a cutter bar, because that flail would do the mowing. So you're gonna take the crop off the cutter bar. It works like a concave in a cylinder on a combine. You're going to pick that crop up off the cutter bar. Up above it, there's what we call a bruising shield or a conditioning hood. And the distance that you go between your V-tine and the conditioning hood plus the speed will determine the aggressiveness and the amount of conditioning that, uh, that you want to, uh, want to have on your crop. Um, whatever conditioning you decide to go with, the most important adjustment is the adjustment of the guy that's holding the steering wheel. The operator, the machine is no better than, of anybody's, any manufacturer's machine is no better than the guy that's, that's operating the machine. Now let's talk about rolls. We have two different options. We have rubber rolls, intermeshing chevron type. If you have a lot of stones, uh, you have some, maybe, the, maybe the, uh, the rubber roll is the way to go for you. Uh, they are a little more forgiving when you get into some more challenging conditions. Also, if you're looking at, if you're 100% alfalfa, or you know, you, you're concerned about leaf loss, uh, you know, maybe the roll conditioner is the way to go. The thing that you want to make sure that you do is check the roll gap, make sure that your conditioners are in good shape, and that you're getting even pressure. Because first crop is going to have a crop mat maybe like this, third or fourth crop, the, the mat may be like this. So we're going to have to make some adjustment. Don't just get in the, in the mower conditioner and just go. You know, you're going to have to think and, and make some adjustments to match the crop and the volume of material that you're putting through it. So our third option is the M-roll that we have from Crone. 
And what that does is it's a steel on steel roll. We have a lot of guys that are doing challenging crops. Uh, maybe it's a hollow stem that you need to fracture the stem. Uh, and then, um, uh, or, or just high volume crops like proton that they do out west. We see a lot of people using cereal rise uh, in cover crop applications here in Ohio and in the Great Lakes states. And then they're, instead of disking those down or rolling them down uh, and planting through that, they're taking it off and using it as, a, uh, as an alternative forage. Um, the other thing is uh, crop like sorghum sedan, silo milo you may call it, proton, uh, whatever the brand name is that's with it. It has a thick stem that's got a lot of moisture in it. And you know, stem moisture and humidity, that's one thing that's, the, the, the leaves and the stems may be dry, but, but you know, the root of that plant, the base of it, uh, may still hold a, hold a lot of moisture. So you may need something like the, like the emerald uh, to be a little, more, uh, a little more aggressive. So just depends. Lots of ways to go, lots of sizes to go, six foot six up to 38 with our brand of machinery. Um, so, you know, make sure that you size your mower uh, appropriately with the horsepower that you have so that it's a safe platform and it's a stable platform uh, so that, you know, you can get as much productivity out of a safe day as possible. Thanks. Let's talk about tires. You know, when, you, when, you're, making a, when you're making a tractor purchasing decision, Tires are part of the conversation, and it should be part of the conversation when you're talking about a mower conditioner. You want to talk about your environment, wh where you're going to mow, uh, the time of year that you're going to mow. You know, we have customers that uh, uh, sometimes their their first cut may be the ground may be very heavy, uh, you know, really wet. So you know, you want to make sure that you have a a flotation tire, an agricultural tire like we have here that's designed for flotation. The other thing is you want to make sure that you have enough ply in the tire to match the speed requirement. This isn't the kind of tire profile. This tire is designed to float through a farm field. It's not designed to go down the interstate like a truck tire. So you want something that is going to have both strength from a ply rating and also flotation because the flotation is in the sidewall of that tire. Uh, and you, the other thing is it's going to be an uh, important part of how, if you're in a hillside, it's going to make a, a, a big, important contribution to how well that it, it stays on the hillside. So tires, don't, don't forget them. And, you know, they're also designed for today's high-speed tractors. Tractors today going 30, 33, higher on the, on the highway. So, you know, most ag tires weren't designed, you know, to go long distances or down the highway. So tire important, tire decisions are important. Brent, disc mowers have certainly allowed us to mow faster, but they also allow us to cover up some bad habits. They'll mow with dull blades. That's right. They'll, they'll let you mow when you shouldn't. You can mow in the rain, uh, you know, and uh, uh, some guys, when they go to the field to mow, they want to see how fast they can go. And you talked about cut quality and, you know, what you're trying to do is you're, when you cut that crop, you're doing it for the health of the crop. Uh, you're doing it for the crop well-being. And, you know, if you do it at a proper speed, at a safe speed for your tractor, so that in the event that a, a deer or a dog or, you know, groundhog, anything, uh, rock stick, sooner or later, you're going to find something that shouldn't be in that hay field. That's and, yeah, and you are not going to want to be going at a speed that doesn't give you the ability to A, react, and B, stop without causing damage to you, the machine, the tractor, whatever you're going to hit. Uh, you know, so you want to you want to be able to make sure that your tractor is sized appropriately so you have enough horsepower and that it's also a stable, uh, solid work platform when you're moving. So maximum speed does not equal maximum productivity. The faster you go, the more likely you are to get yourself into some sticky situations. So Brett, sometimes people take home a piece of equipment and it works good for a little while, and then problems start to pop up. 
and we've got to troubleshoot these issues. When folks call me for assistance with these issues, what are the things I should tell them to check first? Well, a couple of the things that you can ask and talk about is their ground speed. Are they going too fast? Are they not going fast enough? You know, do you, you want that crop to just move over like a wave, move over the over the cutter bar and, and move back and forth. Are their blades dull? Like that first blade we looked at, you know, it's like this long. Well, no wonder they're not getting a, a good cut. So you know, those are the, the two things. Uh, another thing is make sure that all the proper crop guidance, uh, shield or uh, the directional uh, design components that were put into the machine when it, that they're still in place that somebody hasn't taken one out because they thought maybe this would work better or, or that wouldn't work better most of the time we find when we go back to what we would call a factory default setting things will work good but you know one thing we need to talk about christine is hayfield housekeeping Absolutely. And, and you know we see i was up in north dakota a couple weeks ago and those are guys that were bailing hay along the interstate highways. Can you imagine us trying to do that here on I-70 in Ohio? We have some people in my area bail along 77. Uh, and my goodness, all the garbage. All the behind. garbage, all the crud that goes in with it. That's bad for your equipment. That's, it's bad for your livestock. That's right. Up in there. That's feed right. Bunk. You don't want that in the feed bunk. But the, the, the thing that you need to make sure that you watch is twine. Twine is a nemesis. Big bale twine, a lot of twines now have gone from the old sisal twine or, you know, the old uh, uh, natural hemp twine uh, to poly, and it doesn't break down. And you'll see it wound around the manure spreader beaters. If it'll wound, wind around a manure spreader beater, it will wind around your cutting disc on your mow. What's the danger of that besides it just doesn't work as well? Well, it just doesn't work as well, but it, I've actually seen situations where it will get in there and it'll get so hot that it'll catch fire. And you know, so you don't you don't need that. Some of the uh, high tensile wires that a lot of guys are utilizing, the thinner wire that they're using for temporary fencing, same situation. So high tensile fence wire, portable fence wire, um, bale twine, things like that. If you see it in the field, take a second to get off the tractor and pick it up. Because you don't want bossy eating it and you sure don't want to run it through your mower because that's going to tear it apart and if it if it was this big before it went through the mower when it goes through it's going to be this big and you're going to be picking up right the mess. exactly and that's going to cost you a lot of money and a lot of time a lot of aggravation right well brent we've had a fun morning here we have watching aiden mostly hay for us yeah, that's right we're going to be back again with another video to do some setting some raking and we'll do some bailing tomorrow so enjoy Virtual Farm Science Review and come back and see us again in a little bit. See you after a while.